Hello and welcome to the CPA Australia podcast. Your weekly source for accounting, education, career and leadership discussion. In the April 2021 article, I cover a brand new function called LET, L-E-T. Now the LET function doesn't actually perform any calculations itself, but it enables you to incorporate variables in a calculation in a cell. Now, this has limited use for normal functions, but has great possibilities for more complex functions in things like budgets and financial models uh, and just more complex Excel files. So the, the actual syntax or the layout of the let function is it's equals let open bracket. Uh, and then basically you have the ability to define variables. Now in the article, I've used a few examples. I'll use the simple one here. So you can go X comma. So X is the variable. And then I've, I typed in five. So that means X equals five comma. And then Y comma. And then I've typed in a seven. So there's two variables. So X has been defined as five and Y has been defined as seven. Then I do another comma and then I can just go X plus Y as an example uh, and then close the brackets. Now, the beauty of this is when you've got formulas that have multiple uh, calculations that are the same within the formula. Now, the the common one here is uh, X lookup or V lookup. Now, these type of formulas you might want to do different things depending on the result of these entries. Uh, And I'll go into more detail uh, in a minute uh, in terms of the X lookup. But the beauty is you can just calculate, uh, let's say an X lookup or a V lookup once and then refer to it a number of times depending on how you want to handle things. And that's the example I'm, I'm going to give in a moment. The other example in the article is the very first thing I thought of when I heard about this let function. So in Excel, you can use a formula to extract the sheet name. Now the formula itself, the standalone formula is quite long and complex and it uses one part of one calculation three separate times. It's the cell function. So the cell function in Excel can, uh, when when you use the file name option, it can basically give you the full path of the file, the file name, and right on the end is the sheet name. And so that's what we want to extract. But you have to use the cell function three separate times in the single standalone formula. And it becomes quite long. Uh, And so that's the very first thing I thought of is that you could set up the let function to capture this cell function and then just use the variable. And again, I tend to use just the X as the variable because it's nice and short and (laughs) X tends to be a a fairly common uh, variable name. And so I use that in the example. So uh, it does shorten the formula. And in general, shortened formulas are better. Uh, The only downside is, is because let is so different is that uh, it might be a little bit difficult for other, say, uh, more beginner users to understand because you do need to understand the let function because the the let function doesn't do the calculation. It just uh, enables you to have the variables. So the calculation is actually within the let function brackets. Uh, and that's sort of on the end of the let function. And so uh, it may be a bit of a learning curve for new uh, users and beginner users to try and understand the let function. I see it more for intermediate and advanced users. The advantages are, one is you get a shorter formula. So in general, a shorter formula is better. And two, because you're only doing the calculation once for a particular part of the formula, it's quicker. Now, you're not going to see the uh, any increase in speed in terms of if you're just using the let function once. But if you use it multiple times in, say, more complex models, then hopefully you will see the advantage or the, the improvement in speed. OK, so let's go into this XLOOKUP example uh, that I gave. Now, 
obviously, because this is a podcast, you can't go into a lot of detail. Uh, if you do want to check out the video, uh, it goes into, obviously, a lot more detail and you can see everything. But basically, what we have is we want to extract something from a table. Now, that table could have a real number in it. Uh, that's what we're extracting. It could be a text number, which basically means it's left aligned and Excel doesn't treat it like a number until you convert it into a number, which is pretty easy to do. And I'll explain that in a minute. And then it could have, uh, we could have an invalid code that we're looking at, which we, means we return an NA error. So we've got to handle that. Uh, also, there could be text in the column that we're extracting from. Uh, and if that's the case, we want to return the text error. Uh, now, if the cell's blank that we return, it actually returns a zero, which uh, we want to return the word zero error. So there's all these different things we want to return based on the result of this X lookup. And to do that, you have to use the X lookup with a number of if functions. And so you're repeating in, in the example, you're repeating the X lookup function three times. And the XLOOKUP function is reasonably long. Um, and so that really expands out the, the function. Also, I threw in an if error uh, over all of the calculations and just to put a general uh, return, uh, like an input error type thing as well. So there was quite a few different messages that I want to return, which was the text. Uh, within quotation marks, as well as I wanted to return the number. That was the, the aim of it. Uh, and so I had to convert the number. So to convert a text number, so a, a text number is a number that looks like a number, but it's left aligned. Because anything that's left aligned in Excel, assuming that there's no other format being applied to it, uh, is treated as text. And unfortunately, Excel, in a lot of calculations, will not treat a text number as a real number until you convert it to a real number. And the easiest way to do that is to simply multiply that by one. Now, in the previous article, I covered the is functions. Uh, and so I did detail how you can check a text number if that could be a real number by multiplying the formula by one and then just using the is number uh, function around that formula, which is what I've done in the example. Basically, it shortens the formula. It speeds up the formula. And in general, as I mentioned, I think the let function is going to be used by intermediate to advanced users. Initially, probably more advanced users are going to use it. And hopefully, then it will trickle down. Now, just a reminder, it is only available in the subscription version of Excel. Uh, I have no idea of the time frame of getting this into the full version, you know, the sort of DVD version, or when you buy a full version of Excel. But uh, currently in the subscription version, again, Microsoft is trying to encourage everyone to go the subscription version rather than the full versions. So the let function, brand new, offers a lot of possibilities for more complex formulas. It's not really going to be used for the, the common garden variety sum functions, but uh, it is going to offer a lot of opportunities for things like budgets and financial models uh, and even reporting uh, systems. Hope you found that useful. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening to the CPA Australia podcast. For more information on today's episode, please visit the show notes at www.cpaaustralia.com.au forward slash podcast. Never miss an episode by subscribing to our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify or Stitcher. 